let them speak at the end. I thought I'd get Helen Moore right now. Okay. Because then she knows about the hospital. She's taking pictures of it. There's nothing wrong with that hospital. It's in perfect shape. So Helen, I have a dietitian there for 25 or 30 years, whatever it is. She's in that one. I think all of you can hear me. I'm used to working in a hospital, and I was head of the dietary department at Huey P. Long for 27 years. Let me say this. Our first, and I'm so glad Mayor Roy is here. Our first uh, intention is to keep the hospital open as a hospital. And when I say we, I mean the Central Louisiana Historical Association. I'm on that board, and Charles Cherrier, who's the president, asked me to come today and represent that organization. We want to keep it as a hospital. We want to keep it as a building. We do not want it torn down. Our good mayor here in Pineville has said he does not want an empty structure, and we do not either. But we have hired a preservationist consultant, Paul Smith, and I'm going to let him speak in a minute, to start the road to getting this on the historical register. That would save the building. And it's a long road, but we've made the first step, and our petition has been mailed to the trust in Baton Rouge, the powers that be. Uh, there's a lot of ways of looking at this, and of course it's historical. We should keep it. I, I was just reading in the paper recently where on, in, on Governor's Island, out from Manhattan, they have an old hospital built in 1850 that was the... Uh, one of them for, the, for smallpox. And they've kept that structure and they've kept it up so that people can go and visit it and see history. Well, we don't want this to happen to this hospital, but we don't want it to be destroyed. Just like Alcatraz was not destroyed. This is an important historical structure, folks. So we have to look at it that way if all else fails. And it could be made into a nursing home, a retirement home, a business. A resort it has a lot of possibilities but we need to keep that building another track is that we could uh, even get it called an endangered structure like uh, the barn over here at Central that's an endangered structure that's another track we could take uh, for those of us that uh, are interested in trees there's three huge live oaks in the back of that hospital. After a while, I'd like for you to come up and see the pictures that have been taken inside that hospital, which is pristine. Don't let someone tell you that the building is falling down. It is not. It was open until just a few days ago, the uh, uh, ER, the emergency room, and it was a great ER. I was over there taking magazines. The building is not falling down. Now, does it have a little asbestos in it? Let me tell you what. You find any building 75 years old and it's going to have a little asbestos, but you don't go stir it up. Some of you have traveled all over the world, and I have stayed in hotels down in Puerto Rico that was 300 years old. And we've got a building here, 75, we're supposed to uh, demolish it because it's old. Uh, so we, we are uh, determined to keep this building and do something with it. Now I'm going to call on Paul Smith to give a few words of what he's done so far uh, as far as the Historical Association, and uh, we have hired him to do this. Paul? Just very quickly, uh, Helen contacted me about three weeks ago and asked me what could be done to attempt to help save uh, the structure. And um, with that in mind, I have uh, completed a National Register eligibility questionnaire and forwarded it to the State Division of Historic Preservation in Baton Rouge for their consideration. And I expect, I'm optimistic uh, that I'll hear something back within the next couple of weeks and that they will agree with me that uh, the structure, due to its architectural significance and its historical significance, will be eligible for listing on the National Register, which will afford it some limited protection and uh, if, it, if all, as, as Helen says, if all else fails uh, for future redevelopment, uh, it will create um, some financial incentives for, for that. So uh, that's what I've done so far, and I remain optimistic. 
Oh, I, I want him to tell about what he went back and found a copy of the 1938 Alexander <coughs> Day Town Hall. What, what always happens? Part. What always <laughs> happens with situations like this is you go looking for one thing and you find other stuff, and it's the other stuff that brings it to life. And the story, and you guys know all the stories. You've spent years and years there. This is new to me. Um, this structure. But in going back through the records and, and, uh, and reading, 1938 groundbreaking, um, they threw a party. And it was the largest party ever to be held uh, as a state function in the state of Louisiana. It was estimated that between 25 and 30,000 people showed up for a barbecue, at which they barbecued 50 beef and 25 mutton. They served 25,000 pounds of barbecue to 30,000 people and not one bite was left when they were finished, so it got kicked off with a, with a great start. So uh, anyway, there's lots of history. I've, I've just scratched the surface, but it is an important uh, structure and certainly worthy of being saved. I hope you find the brass open. I think oh, we found I was just right the, the brass, brass doors. They're there. We know, we know where the brass doors are.